Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drone. So, as the title suggests, I bought a GoPro Karma. So, this has obviously been out a while now. It had massive issues when it first came out and that caused massive issues further down the line and it just didn't sell as well as it should have done. So, in the box, this is what you get. So you get the controller. I've got two batteries, mine, there's one in the drone that should go there. I bought mine used and it came with the GoPro 5. So I've just left that camera on it and it comes with a gimbal, handheld gimbal. So let me show you what you get in the box and why I bought it. So let me check the bits out. So let's take the drone out, get rid of the case and the gimbal. Let's get the case off the bench. So these are the main items. So let's have a quick look at the drone. So the drone is big. There's no doubt in the fact it's big. It's got foldable arms, very, very smooth in operation. Really smooth and nice to move. And then it has landing legs that you drop down here. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice under here, by modern standards, this has no optical avoidance, there's no sonar, there's no camera to hold it in place. It, can't, it just relies on its GPS to hold it in place. And it is heavy. But because it's heavy, it's smooth, but we'll discuss that in part two of the video. So, I I bought this for one reason. So, well, two reasons. So, I decided a couple of months ago that I wanted to buy the Osmo Pocket because of things I want to do in the summer for the channel. And I decided I wanted some kind of handheld stabilised gimbal, but I had one that did my phone, but I wanted one that fitted a better camera, basically. So I was going to buy it and it was £319 or whatever it was for something I wasn't going to use often enough. And then I thought to myself, well I'll buy the GoPro equivalent, which is this. You can buy this on its own with a bit that goes in here with a camera. But it was coming to about 240 quid. So I looked for a used, Go I used one of these. Now I paid like £515 for this, which I think was really good value because I then had the best of both worlds. I had a Give, oh, it's not as small as the Osmo Pocket and it's probably not as advanced as an Osmo Pocket but I'll be shooting in 1080, I won't be shooting in 4K anyway so this comes out of the front and you can see that it's got this mount here inside you've got exactly the same mount inside there oh, you can see that the light's not great you just push it in place It's not thing to want to go. Oh, I've got to unlock it first. You unlock that there, so that's your lock ring. Push it into here. It's hard doing that when I'm trying to look at the camera at the same time. And there you've got your gimbal onto this. You then turn the power on. This is obviously rechargeable. And there you have a handheld gimbal. Now, for me, this is all I needed. This is exactly what I wanted. And to be fair, it obviously powers the GoPro as well. I don't know if you can see that there. So you can see it's powering the GoPro. And you can see it quite, it's very smooth in operation, as you can see. So for me, this was all I needed. I wanted to be able to do this in the summer to film with it and get some nice stable footage of stuff I want to do. And for me, it's absolutely perfect. You can change modes, and this isn't going to be a review of this. This is just the reason I bought it. But it is one of the main reasons that I bought the drone in the first place. As you can see, it's really smooth moving. It, it really is a nice thing. And I've had a go with this. It works absolutely perfectly for what I want it for. Let's just turn this back off. And go back to the drone. Because like I say, the review is on the drone, not the gimbal. So on the front, this just pushes back inside here, and then all you do is flick that ring down. It couldn't be any easier to swap them about. So obviously this comes with a GoPro 5, so it's got the GoPro 5 standards. I film in 2.7 Super View, because I prefer the Super View image. And this won't do 4K Super View, not on the camera anyway. So that's the grip. That's the drone, and this is the controller. Let's flick the controller on. In fact, let's flick the drone on. Let's turn everything on. So as you can see, it's got LEDs front and back, reds and greens. 
And when this connects, it'll connect the camera and the gimbal will start working when this connects up. There you go. So this has got a built-in screen, obviously, as you can see. Let me just start by saying now, this is a camera drone. This isn't for doing follow me mode, orbits, or all the rest of them, waypoints. This is purely a camera drone, and that's the reason I wanted it. I, I'd, as you've probably seen from my videos, I don't care about follow me mode. They're not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in getting good footage from the drone. Follow me mode is great for the people that want it. I don't particularly, and I think if you want follow me mode, you should be buying something like the Mavic Air or something that kind of size. If I flick up on my screen, there you go. So you can see my image. So that's the image you get, and this is decent in sunlight. Battery too cold, remove and warm up, and then try again. So it won't let me take off because the battery's too cold. But as you can see, you can control your gimbal from your wheel here. So you've got the wheel on the back of the controller. On the other side I've got video, start and stop, and then I've got a mode switch here which allows me to change that. I've then got camera settings I can set, so I've hit this button here. These are my flight settings, so my volume on this, the brightness, easy mode, flight limits and distance, I can change all them. Maximum distance 3280, which is its maximum distance it's got on here. That's in feet. You can obviously change these by doing I can turn the distance off, so I've turned it off, so I've got no maximum flight distance anymore. And I can turn the altitude off and return to home altitude, I can adjust here as well. So as you see, I can just bring it about 264 feet, which is high. I'll bring it back down a bit, so I don't forget. And it really is a nice little screen, you just tap to, to move on. Your camera tilt, you can adjust the speed and direction, so I can adjust the, the speed of this tilt wheel. And you can see it's on three at the minute. I can adjust that right up to 5, which makes it much, much faster. Or I can go right down to 1, which makes it really slow. Which is probably what you'd use for filming more than if you wanted to get really safe shots. Just come out of this. Then I can turn the lights on and off and various things. This is where you do the calibration of the compass, the drone and the controller. I've then got um, video settings, so if I click on where it says 2, 7, if you look at there, I'm using 2.7k set for a second in super view, if I click on that, I can then adjust my video mode, on his photo mode, so I've changed it into photo, change it back into video, I can then change my resolution, right up to 4k, or down to 720 but if I go 1080 I can then change my frames per second I can film in slow mo 120 I can adjust my field of view to from wide to narrow and then if I come back out of that and I change this back down to 60 You'll see that I can change my field of view to super view now. But you can't do super view in 120 frames a second. So the screen really is a nice touch screen. And it looks bright because it is bright. Even in the sun I can see this screen quite well. And obviously it helps because I can angle it to whatever angle I want it to do. But the controller itself is a really nice controller. It's like a rubber coated thing on here. So yeah, if your hands sweat you're not going to drop your controller. You've got a power on and off switch, you've got your start and stop motors, and you've got your return to home button. Really simple, does very little on the controller. Really is a simple controller, but what I must say is that this is for, definitely for filming. You don't want, this isn't a, return, this isn't a, a gimmicky drone that does all the other stuff. And as you can imagine, you're going to get a great image out of it from the GoPro on the front, this obviously comes in a variety of different formats. You can get this, I think they went up to six. So you can get this with a GoPro 6 on the front or you can just buy the drone without anything. So it comes in, you still can get them. They don't make this anymore, but you can still buy them new from places. People have been selling them off in the States. You can buy them a lot cheaper here in the UK. But I'm happy with what I paid for this. I was actually surprised how well it flew. I've seen some negative reviews of this. now. I don't know why the reviews were negative, because the reviews I've watched seem to have decent footage, it's because it doesn't do all the other things. 
and maybe we become used to that on drones these days for me it, it's irrelevant it doesn't matter to me and it is big and it is quite noisy but that do, it's no no noisier than a lot of other drones out there I don't think it's any noisier than the Mavic Air it's just got power they have nice big motors and it is a heavy thing but it smiles it flies smooth very smooth to give you incredibly good video because that's the only thing it's been designed for so I'm going to get some flight footage up in the next week or so. Uh, I'll film some footage of it flying, I'll have some with my GoPro, but more importantly of course, I want to have the video from the drone itself. I will film in 2.7K, 30 frames a second super view, because I think that gives you the best image from a GoPro 5. On a 6 you can go higher than that, but I think the 5 is probably, my, I don't think the 4K image on the 5 is as good as the 2.7 could look. So that's what I film in the 2.7. With the 6, yeah, you can definitely get better image quality. The drone itself is nicely made. It, it's, it's plastic, you don't get me wrong, but it's, it's hard to describe what it feels like. It's really heavy because it's obviously got a steel chassis inside this, but it is quite plasticky, but it's thick plastic and it's nicely finished off. I like the fact it, what it is. It comes in the case, so the case it came with isn't a special edition, it just, they always come with the case because of the size of it, I think. And the batteries, are these so this is your battery I can't even remember what it is let's see if I can read what it's got on here one second I don't think I can read that no I can't read what it says it's too small writing for me I haven't got glasses on so what I'll do is in the description I'll leave uh, a note saying what size these batteries are. The batteries click in this way. I'll turn the drone off. And then you oh, I'll turn it back on again. Lost connection. So to pull the battery out, you simply pull on your strap, it's going to standby mode. And pull the battery out of here. Powering off. Now, if you know the history of this thing, the original ones fell out of the sky because this battery came disconnected. I'm presuming at the port here, I don't think the battery ever fell out of the drone. So, I actually have not seen a Mark 1, so I can't tell you what the difference is, but this has this locking mechanism, so when you pop it in, you push it in, and then that locks your battery in place. And it, it seems to work really nice, there's no looseness in there. And then, on the back, you have an indicator to tell you battery life, battery power, so you can see that's a flat battery. Um, one will be like, one's more like 50% than anything lower. It goes, also sorry, I've actually flown this one. This one's probably got about 25% in it. Uh, and I think you saw the one, this one had 25 because I, I had a couple of flights visit yesterday when the winter, summer was here in February. So, yeah, you'll see for yourself when I put the next part up, but I'm happy with what I paid for it, so. Thanks ever so much for watching and have a fantastic day.